According to reference table J, zinc is a much more active metal than copper is. Therefore, zinc should be able to replace copper in a copper compound, but copper should not be able to replace zinc in a zinc compound. Let's put that to the test. In this beaker we have some zinc sulfate. In this beaker we'll have copper sulfate. To put the ions into solution, we'll simply dissolve them in some distilled water. I'm going to place a strip of zinc metal into the copper sulfate solution and the strip of copper into the zinc sulfate solution and wait and see what happens. After a very short time it seems apparent that the copper has no reactivity in the zinc solution but that the zinc has reacted with the copper. The black you see there are microscopic crystals of copper. Some larger crystals have formed up here giving it a copper color. The reason for this is when zinc is placed in copper the zinc oxidizes and the copper ions reduce. Zinc goes from being zero to plus two by losing two electrons and the copper ions go from being plus two to zero by gaining two electrons. Well, what if you could take those electrons and actually use them to power a device? Something that we call a load. To accomplish this, what you need to do is put the zinc and copper into two different containers. Don't put the zinc directly in the copper or the electrons are going to make the transfer right in this beaker. Instead, put the zinc in to this beaker with the zinc sulfate and put the copper in with the copper sulfate. Metals do not react with their own ion. There's actually no potential difference between zinc and zinc plus two ions. So no reaction will occur in those beakers. If we take a wire and place it on the zinc strip, take that wire and connect it to the negative terminal of our load, in this case a voltmeter to detect how many volts this is going to give off. Why the negative end? Well, you see the zinc is going to undergo oxidation. And oxidation means a loss of electrons. Electrons are what charge? Negative. So the negative end of the voltaic cell is where oxidation takes place, where the negative electrons come down the strip and into the negative terminal of our voltmeter. Then we hook the copper up to the positive terminal of our voltmeter. Now apparently there's nothing happening. Our voltage is still zero. And the reason is because we have an external circuit, wires, but we need an internal circuit. We need to complete the circuit by connecting the two solutions. For this we need a salt bridge, which is a semi-permeable membrane that lets ions flow from one solution to the next. To make our salt bridge, what we need is a salt specifically a salt that has nothing in common with the solutions being used in our voltaic cell. For example, we're using zinc and we're using copper. The sulfate is just a spectator ion. We can't use a zinc salt, we can't use a copper salt, but a sodium salt is perfectly acceptable because it has nothing in common with the reaction and won't interfere with it in the least. So we take some salt, We add distilled water to it to make a solution. And then we take our semi-permeable membrane, place it in here to soak it. Watch the voltmeter as the salt bridge is placed between the two solutions. Aha! Look what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves some voltage a little less than one volt. For this particular reaction, the oxidation potential for zinc is 0.76 volts. The reduction potential for copper is positive 0.34 volts. So if both of these solutions were one molar, 
the voltage we should be seeing would be about 1.1 volts. Obviously, these solutions are less than one molar in concentration, which is why we're seeing less than 1.1 volts as our final voltage. So, what's going on in this voltaic cell? Simply this. In this cell, the zinc is having its electrons removed. It's being oxidized. Why? Because the copper ions in here are acting as an oxidizing agent, making electrons be stripped from the zinc, go up through the wire, through the load, and into the copper strip. Now, copper has no use for the electrons. In fact, we technically don't even need to use copper for this reaction. We could use any non-reactive conductive thing, like we could probably use platinum. But if we use a different metal in with a copper solution, most metals can replace copper. So if we used anything other than copper, we might get an unintended side reaction. Using copper guarantees we don't get any side reactions. Anyway, the copper strip has no use for these electrons because metals can't gain electrons. But metal ions can. So the copper plus two in the solution will be attracted to the electrons that are sitting on this metal strip. As soon as they touch that metal strip, they gain the electrons and become copper zero. This metal strip is actually going to gain mass over time, and the solution will lose concentration of copper ions as copper plus two turns into copper zero. In this beaker, as the zinc turns from zero to plus two, the mass of the zinc strip is going to decrease as the zinc dissolves to form zinc ions in the solution. So the concentration of zinc ions in this beaker will go up as the electrons leave and go through the wire and through the load on fire. What's the salt bridge doing? Well, as excess zinc ions enter this solution, there's an excess of positive charge. So the chloride ions from the sodium chloride will move from the salt bridge into here to counteract that excess positive charge. Negative ions move into here to counter out the excess positive charge from the excess zinc ions. In this beaker, copper plus two ions are coming out of solution, leaving the negative spectator ions. We have an excess of negative charge in this beaker. So the sodium ions from the salt bridge will come off the salt bridge into the solution to make up for the lost plus two copper ions. Of course, each sodium is only plus one, so for every copper plus two that comes out, two sodiums have to go in to take their place. This is the anode. The anode is where oxidation takes place. This is the cathode. This is the electrode where reduction takes place. The anode and cathode refer to the metal strips that the wires are connecting onto. This is called the anode half cell. And this is called the cathode half cell. And together, these two half cells form a voltaic cell. Now, if you want to make a battery, what you do is you hook up a whole bunch of these in series. In other words, we'd hook up the zinc of, we'd hook up the zinc of one cell to the copper of this cell, and we'd just keep going and going and going in series. The more cells you have, the more voltage you're going to get.